Crying himself to sleep with no hope left for dreaming. Begging in the burning sun, holding out her hand. Palms held tightly on his ears to muffle all the screaming. Sitting where her house once stood, trying hard to understand. See the children of the world, all the children of the world. Sing for the children of the world. Pray for the children of the world. Sing, children of the world, come together and hear the call. Sing, children of the world, Islam will unite us all. Sing, children of the world, come together and hear the call. Sing, children of the world, Islam. You are not finding peace in the world. Your job place you don't find peace. Your home you don't find peace. What is the last abode for you to search peace? The house of Allah. You are in the house of Allah and you are killed in the house of Allah. They enter and destroy you. That was the warning of the Prophet. When will that happen? The Prophet said it will happen when this Ummah forgets the responsibility. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ماشاء اللہ آئی سیما حسین صدیقی سن آف بردر عمران پریسیڈنٹ آف دا آئی آر ای ایف شیل بی دا ماسٹر آف کنڈک آف دس آفٹرنون سیشن ایٹ دا آئی آر ای ایف ایس سچ اے ویلکم آل آف یو ان دا اسلامک اینڈ اکیڈمک سنڈے سیشن آن دا ٹویلتھ آف نومبر ٹو تھاؤزینڈ سیونٹین آئی انوائٹ خاری عبد الرحمان اسٹوڈنٹ آف دا آئی آر ای ایف to commence the session with recitation followed by English translation on the recited portion from Surah Fatah, Surah number 48, Ayat 29. Khari Abdurrahman. I welcome all of you with Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Meaning may peace and mercy and blessings of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Inshallah, now I shall recite Surah Fatha, Surah number 48, Ayat number, uh, Ayat number 29, Inshallah. And then I'll translate in English from the glorious Quran. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ركعا سجدا يبتغون فغلا من الله رزوانا سيماهم في وجوئهم من أثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة وَمَثَلُهُمْ فِي الْإِنْجِيلِ كَذَرَعٍ أَخْرَجَ شَتَأَهُ فَآذَارَهُمْ فَاسْتَغَلَغُ فاستغلغ فاستبع على صوقه يعجب الزرع ليبغيض يعجب الزرع 
ليضيغ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما Translation In the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Rasul of Allah and those with uh, and those with him are strong against the unbelievers and kind to each other among themselves when you see them you will find them making ruku bowing down and sujood prostrate in prayer and carving for the blessings from Allah and his good pleasure they have the mark of sujood on their forehead the traces of their prostration this is their simultune in the Torah and their simultune in the Injil they are like the seed which put forth its sprout then strengthens it then becomes thick and stand firmly on its stem delighting the sower of the seed so that through them he may enrich the unbelievers yet to those of them who will believe and do good deeds Allah has promised forgiveness and a great reward wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin alhamdulillah all praises be to Allah alone the IREF Islamic Research and Educational Foundation is a full-time Islamic Dawa research based and educational foundation established in the Hadaba city of Telangana state of India as a government of India's registered non-profit benign and Islamic propagation office since February 1998. MashaAllah, since its establishment on every Sunday, the IREF without fail conducts educational Islamic sessions mainly based on introducing Islam in a right perspective to both non-Muslims and Muslims alike through the Quran and authentic teachings of Muhammad Moreover, the speakers at the IREF are trained to clarify misconceptions about Islam and answer allegations against Islam in order to bring people of different faiths to live with a better and correct understanding about Islam and coexist peacefully. Alhamdulillah, Brother Imran, as he is popularly known for Mushtaba Hussain Siddiqui is the founder and president of the IREF and he is the primary force for all the activities undertaken at the IREF. He is the main speaker on every Sunday and his open question and answer session on Sundays is a reckoning factor that demarcates IREF from many other organizations of the like. Alhamdulillah, Brother Imran's international exposure gives him a better opportunity to explain the answers more profoundly. By Allah's grace and mercy alone, Brother Imran hitherto has traveled to countries like the USA, Canada, UK, Ireland, Scotland, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Kuwait, and Bahrain. Subhanallah. Brother, Mar Brother Imran's marriage with Sister Amdul Mateen in 2005 as his second wife has added a feather to the IREF activities with an exclusive women-only program on every Saturday and an established a full-time separate women's section of the IREF with all the same facilities as in the brother section of the IREF. Brother Imran's first wife sister Nida is a homemaker and a great support to him back home. MashaAllah. On 29th of October 2017, Sunday, Brother Imran concluded his 76th session, the English series entitled The 99 Names of Allah that he commenced on 12th January 2014. May Allah accept Brother Imran's efforts to introduce Allah to mankind through the most beautiful names and most beautiful attributes of Allah. May Allah also reward all the brothers and sisters 
who supported him their own respective capacities in these same sessions on the 99 names of Allah. Alhamdulillah, today, on the 12th of November 2017, the Sunday, Brother Imran shall deliver an English talk followed by the question and answer session on the topic, The Prophet's Warning, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Without further delay, I request Brother Imran to commence his talk now. Brother Imran. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Auzu billahi minna shaitan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa qala al-Rasoolu ya Rabbi inna qawmi attakazu haza al-Qur'an mahajura. Rabbish rahli sadri wa yassir li amri wa halu lughdatam min lisani yafqahu khali. Amma baad, respected chairperson brother Simak, my respected brothers and my respectable sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. MashaAllah, the subject of this afternoon's session as advertised as the Prophet's warning. Now when I said the Prophet, but natural as a Muslim, I am not referring to any of those messengers and Prophets of Allah that Allah sent before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but naturally I am talking about the last and final prophet that is prophet muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah rabbul alamin said wama arsalnaka illa rahmatul lil alamin my messenger has not been sent but to the entire universe as a mercy but this very messenger who was sent as a mercy to entire universe he very often warned of things to happen in future based on what Allah Rabbul Alameen would reveal to him through the wahi in the Quran or through the inspiration that he received in the form of ahadith and that beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would again convey it to the Sahaba Akram and to the people to come till Qiyamah as a part of his Ummah and in the mankind mashallah. This subject the Prophet's warning it can be a very vast subject because the beloved Prophet ﷺ has warned of several consequences, of several repercussions, of several devastations, destructions, catastrophes that may happen if we human beings and especially we Muslims are not going to obey Allah and Muhammad Rasulullah. Of them, I would like to point out the one that is related very closely to the ayat which I selected in the beginning of my talk as the main ayat for this session which is from Surah Furqan which is Surah number 25 of the glorious Quran and ayat number 30, 30. Now this Surah of the glorious Quran, Surah Furqan this name itself, Furqan is one of the five names of the glorious Quran Allah Rabbul Alameen has referred to the Quran by five different names. One of them is Al-Kitab. Zalik Al-Kitab ul This is referred as Kitab. When you read Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 1 to 3, Alif Lam Meem, Zalik Al-Kitab ul So this is Al-Kitab. Then the Quran has also been referred as At-Tanzil. When you read Surah Zumar, Allah referred to it as At-Tanzil, meaning the book or something that was revealed in stages to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is referred as Al-Quran, Shahru Ramazan Al-Lazi Unzila Fihi Al-Quran. So we all know this is Al-Quran also. It is referred as Al-Zikr. When you read Surah Hijr, Surah number 15, Ayat number 9, Allah said, Inna nahnu nazzalna zikra. Allah referred to it as Al-Zikr, meaning a reminder. Something that reminds you again and again of what you have to do and what you cannot do, what you shall not do. Similarly, Allah referred to the book, as Al Furqan, and there is an entire surah by this name, Surah Furqan, which is the 25th surah of the glorious Quran. And the very first ayat of this surah is Tabarak al Lazi, meaning glory be to the one who revealed Nazzal al Furqana ala abdihi, who revealed a Furqan unto his servant. Why did Allah say it is a Furqan? Because through this Furqan, O Muhammad, warn the alameen 
you see when you read surah sabha surah number 34 ayat number 28 allah rabbul alamin pointed out educated mankind that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent with two primary purpose one is giving glad tidings allah says wama arsalnaka illa kafatan linnas we did not send you but as a messenger to entire mankind wama arsalnaka what is the job of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Bashir means to give bashara, give glad tidings. We sent you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to give you glad tidings to the people. One nazirao and to warn them. Warn them is one of the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Like a teacher or a trainer trains you on a particular subject or a particular field and they have their style of teaching. Similarly, Allah's Messenger وسلم, was sent to guide mankind in two different styles, in two different ways. One is giving glad tidings to the people. You see, if you make five times salah, Allah Rabbul Alameen will give you Jannatul Firdaus. If you do this good, if you are obedient to the parents, Allah will give you Jannat. If you give charity, if you pay zakat, you will go into Jannat. And this Jannat is like this. So these are all glad tidings. Forgiveness from Allah, mercy from Allah. These are all the glad tidings that Allah Rabbul Alameen gave. But then at the same time, Nazira, we sent you to warn the people. So warning and glad tidings, psychologists, they will tell you that human being has been created with a nature wherein if you are said to do something, if you are commanded to do something, if your parents want you to do something, if you want somebody who is subordinate to you to do something, there are only two ways to make them do. When you are children, when we are children, or we have children at home, you bribe them. How do you bribe them? If you do this, I'll give you a Cadbury. If you do this, I'll give you a chocolate. If you do this, I'll give you a lollipop. So this lollipop is a glad tiding for the child. This Cadbury is a glad tiding for the child. In the school, when they go to the school, the exam when they write, if you do this, you will get grade 1. So that grade 1 is a glad tiding. If you pass meritoriously, this is what will happen to you. These are glad tidings now. Warning. If you don't study, you will become a beggar on the road. This is a warning now. I mean, you have two options. If you don't follow the law, the police will arrest you. If you break the law, this is the fine to you. If you do this, you will be sent to three years jail. This is a warning now. Similarly, our Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam, because Allah sent him as a mercy to humanity, as a messenger to mankind, Allah created you and me and Allah knew that mankind can be guided on the right path in two styles. One, giving them glad tidings. So many of us, when the parents command us something, when our teachers command us something, when our leaders command us something, when the government makes a law, a lot of people, they do it by themselves and they don't need an external force to make it do. When it comes to the Islamic context, this is where you have Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he got the title Siddiq from Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Why that Siddiq? So when you read Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 285, the last two Ayat, 285 and 286, that were given as a gift, revealed as a gift to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Miraj. In Ayat number 285, Allah Rabbul Alameen is talking about the category of believers, the topmost category of the believers. What is the sign of the topmost category of the believers? Samena Watana. When they hear anything that this is what Allah said, when they hear anything that this is what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, they just simply immediately obey it. They don't even give a second thought to it. Is this what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said? Is this what Allah said? Samena wa atana. We have surrendered to it. We heard, we are ready to obey. Did the Prophet say go and jump into, the, into this valley? No questions after that. Who will take care of my parents who will look after my wife and my children is it not a part of my duty to even look after them is it not that Allah made me responsible towards my parents also um, Muhammad Sallam must have said this with some other intention maybe I am misinterpreting it no no the believers of the topmost category are when they hear a command from Allah in the right perspective they understand and the moment they understand it in the right perspective they immediately obey it and this is where a Siddiq comes. When you count the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa considers Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala no, in the line of the Sahaba on the topmost level because of his Iman. What was his Iman? Anything.
anything any time allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they commanded or said anything abu bakr siddiq razi allah ta'ala no was such that he would never give it a second thought to accept it when it comes to umar ibn al khattab the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam verily said that if after me allah would have continued prophethood and messengerhood allah would have appointed umar ibn al khattab razi allah ta'ala no to become a prophet and a messenger but you remember when we read sahih al bukhari we come to understand that when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said none of you can be true believers unless you love allah and me more than anyone on earth so umar ibn al khattab comes to muhammad sallam to say oh allah's messenger i love allah the most and after allah i love myself the most the prophet said you cannot be a believer but not a single incident of the life of abu bakr siddiq where he said such a thing anything said he immediately agreed line in the top of the line is abu bakr siddiq razi allah ta'ala so now this is a glad tidings to these people i mean by nature there are people who have that love for allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the extent that anything coming from them they take it as final now and this is what again allah showed as a sign of the believers what was that sign of the believers again shown in the glorious quran allah rabbul alamin said in quran in surah baqara surah number 2 ayat number 165 people say there is no extremism in islam of course when it comes to violent activities there is no extremism in islam when it comes to loving allah says the love for allah in the hearts of the believers is in shiddah a shiddah it is from is this ashiddah you have shiddat shiddat pasand meaning the extremist allah says the believers are extremists when it comes to the love of allah subhanahu wa taala if it is a love of allah they have no one in their minds when it comes to allah subhanahu wa taala a jew of the time of abu bakr siddiq razi allah taala anhu when allah revealed in the quran that is there anyone amongst you who can give a loan to allah so that allah returns the loan with a great reward to you so this jew after he heard that such an ayat was revealed to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came across abu bakr siddiq and he said ya yeah, abu bakr i heard your allah has become a beggar he is asking for loans now zubillah min salik he said allah is asking for a loan what kind of a god do you worship what kind of an allah do you worship he is asking you people to give a loan and abu bakr siddiq razi allah gave him a tight slap he immediately ran to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam do you know abu bakar slapped me and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam immediately responded and said are you sure was it abu bakar or umar ibn khattab razi allah ta'ala because this was the impression of umar ibn khattab razi allah ta'ala the prophet expected umar ibn khattab razi allah ta'ala to do something of this kind but then again you see look at the nature this is very important in this incident for you and me also for a moment to imagine abu bakar siddiq reacting in this manner because since our childhood when we are taught about the sirat of abu bakar siddiq razi allah taala no a very humble personality a very kind personality a very soft spoken personality a very mild personality and suddenly reacting to the accent and giving a tight slap without any second statement without any second word without a dialogue or discussion a tight slap to this guy and he said no it was abu bakar and abu bakar siddiq radhiyallahu anhu talon came rushing behind this guy and he said oh rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam give me the person give me the permission i'll behead this fellow and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ya abu bakar cool down what has happened to you what happened what did he do and what is the response of abu bakar siddiq radhiyallahu anhu see this nature i am showing about the people who instantly take what allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave so this is glad tiding to these people glad tiding comes to people of this quality of iman what is the quality of iman look at the quality of iman of abu bakar siddiq this fits the ayat from surah baqara surah number 2 ayat number 165 the believers are said that their hearts have shiddat extremism in the love for allah subhanahu wa taala extremism this is what allah says in the quran extremism not too much not in great quantity extremist when it comes to loving allah subhanahu wa taala and what is abu bakar siddiq razi allah taala statement there you look at what he is saying he says ya rasulullah i swear by allah if anyone in front of abu bakar abuses his daughter aisha bin bint abu bakar if they abuse my daughter aisha bint abu bakar razi allah taala anhu this father abu bakar will be quiet i will not respond i will be patient persevering those abuses seeking a reward from allah for it but ya rasulullah if they abuse allah in front of abu bakar then either that person or abu bakar is to live after that 
There is nothing after that. If they abuse Allah, what is the purpose of me being a Muslim then? If I am living and living to see that people in front of me are abusing my deity, my God, the only true God Allah who created me, the one in whom I hope to enter paradise forever and ever and ever for the few deeds that I do for about a life of 50 to 60 years and I am so shameless in my iman and my faith in Allah that people abuse Allah and no reaction from me. It is better I die than live to listen people abusing Allah in front of me. I can't take it, Ya Rasulullah. This is the people with great high faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Abu Bakr Siddiq's quality. That is the quality of Abu Bakr Siddiq. So glad tiding to such people. Glad tiding to such people. Glad tiding to such people. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa giving those glad tidings. These are my iman, people with iman. This is my ummah of iman. And then amongst the ummah of iman, you have a quality of the people that need to get some warnings now. If you don't do this, then look at what Allah is going to do. If you don't do this, look at what Allah is going to do. So you have ayat in Quran, so many ayat where Allah keeps warning the Muslim believers. Which category of believers who do not fit into the category of the topmost quality of Iman, where it is Samena Watana, we heard and we obey. So a warning comes to them. Oh, okay, you are a Muslim. You said you love Allah the most. You love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after Allah the most. You love Islam the most. Then if that is the case, prove it with your actions. Can you with your actions in your life prove your claim that you love Allah, Muhammad Islam and Islam the most? If that is the condition, then remember, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَا أَبَاؤُكُمْ Give them the warning of Muhammad Wasallam. Say to them, warn them that قُلْ In Arabic it means say, it means proclaim, it means give them a warning. Just let them take a heed. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَا أَبَاؤُكُمْ Say to them, even if it is your mother or your father, meaning if you have an affection towards mother and father, your love towards your mother and father, or your children, or your brothers or your sisters, or your relatives or your kindred, the warning comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the kind of warning. Or be it their husbands or their wives. Do the wives say they love their husbands a lot? And the husbands say they love their wives a lot? Say to them, even if it is the love or the taking care of the responsibility given to you from Allah to love and take care of your wives and for the wives to be obedient to your husbands, if you love this responsibility given by Allah more than Allah Himself, how can I love a responsibility given by Allah more than Allah Himself? I love my parents. It's a responsibility upon me. It's a duty upon me to serve my parents. But how can I love this responsibility, this duty of serving my parents, more than the duty and responsibility of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what is the difference in my iman then? Because a person is abusing my mother. If he abuses my mother, teri maaki, and I react instantly, what? You can't take it. But a person is committing shirk on earth against Allah, and nothing happens to me. So Allah says, Qul in kana Did they react the same way they reacted somebody when they abused their mother or their father? No, we don't even ponder on it. We didn't even think for a second time. Okay, that is lakum dinagu. Okay, let him do that. Makes no difference to me because, oh, he's saying to Allah, Allah will take care of him. This cannot be the love of a believer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This cannot be a quality of the ummati of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is 100% against the nature of the Ummat of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa A policeman cannot witness a crime being committed in front of him. If a policeman is witnessing a crime, doing nothing, you know what will be the first action by the government? Suspension of the policeman. He will be suspended from his duty. He will be removed from that honor that he is a policeman. Similarly, you and I as a Muslim, if we do not take a lesson, what lesson? The lesson taught to us in the Quran that you are not supposed to love anyone over Allah and Muhammad sallallahu and Islam. You cannot. Everything in your life that has been given to you and the affection you have towards it. I have affection towards my parents. I have affection towards my wife and my children. I have affection towards my country. I have affection towards the people of the country. I have affection towards my neighbors, towards 
the people living around me my family members my friends this affection is an exam given to you do you love these people more than allah what do you mean more than allah if anything happens to any one of them how is your reaction then introspection to you how do you react something happens to your mother you had to write an examination you are writing the annual exam for engineering final year the last exam paper if you don't write you can fail but you heard your mother needs blood she is in an emergency room she will die if she doesn't receive the blood from you you have the same blood group ask any any common any child any person with little bit of common sense a normal child of her of the parents he would say i will fail for one year allah will give me the risk my mother is more important to me if that is your reaction for your mother and your father how don't you react when the people are against allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this world how can you sit so comfortably consoled in your homes how can you live in those comfort zones how can you push back yourself into cocoons how can you become a turtle with the head inside the shell how is this possible a people of this quality of iman are warned now qul in kana abaukum if you say you love your mother and your father then the love of your parents wa banaukum then the love of your children wa ikhwanukum the love of your brothers and your sisters wa azwajukum then the love of your spouses wa shiratukum the love for your family members and your friends wa amwalun ikhtaraftumuha then the love that you have for acquiring wealth for yourself your bank accounts i shall earn i shall keep money for myself while doing a job i am working in an it company my it company made me sign an agreement the agreement i signed in my it company is when i am doing the job i shall not discuss religion you see actually i love islam but i have signed an agreement what about the covenant with allah what about the agreement you signed with allah where did you sign that agreement you you may not have signed it the way you sign an agreement in a company the moment you said ashhadu an la ilaha illallah you have signed an agreement with allah i bear witness that there is no god but allah if you have taken this as a serious note for yourself if you truly mean it then no other agreement is valuable after that agreement do you you pick up ways where there is a will there is a way there has to be a way otherwise you don't do this you give priority to your job because you feel this is the job through which i earn my living this is the job through which i get a salary with which i look after my parents i look after my children i look after the medicine to my mother if this is your iman then remember wa amwalun ikhtaraftumuha because you forgot that the one who actually controls the universe he is the one who let you do this job you forgot him then bear witness then take a warning from him this is the warning that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave from allah subhanahu wa taala warning wa amwalun ikhtaraftumuha if you love the wealth or the money that you want to accommodate acquire in your bank accounts if that is your criteria wa amwalun ikhtaraftumuha wa tijaratun takhshawna kasadaha the business in which you deal the jobs that you do if you fear i do something for islam i speak about tauhid they are giving me a sweet box filled with sweets or giving me a christmas cake well i can't say anything to them because it's a christian company an american company a white man's company if i say i don't eat a christmas cake he may fire me from the job wa tijaratun takhshawna kasadaha if you fear that you may lose a job and you love your job wa masakin wa tardunha and if you love the homes in which you delight to live when that word masakin comes it includes your home your locality your neighborhood your city your country anywhere you love to live ahabba ilaykum min allahi wa rasulihi wa jihadin fi sabilihi if you love these three if you love these eight things your mother and your father qul in kana abaukum say to them be it your mother or your fathers wa banaukum or your children your sons and your daughters wa ikhwanukum or your brothers or your sisters wa azwajukum your wives or your the husbands for the wives wa shiratukum or the relatives or the friends that you have wa amwalun ikhtaraftumuha or the wealth that you want to amass for yourself gather for yourself acquire for yourself deposit in the banks for yourself wa tijaratun takhshawna kasadaha or if you fear you may lose a job or a business and if you you have a love for the job and the business over the love of wa masakin wa tardunha or the homes in which you delight to live 
ahabba ilaykum if you love these eight things more than Allah more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam more than striving in the way of Allah doing jihad in the way of Allah and when I say jihad in the way of Allah it shall be very clear to you this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam through the Quran has been commanded to do jihad and this jihad the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said after I have been sent to this ummah the jihad has been ordained and it will continue till qiyamah and my ummah will keep doing jihad and what is jihad? jihad is your struggle towards establishing yourself and inviting others for ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu wa la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh this is the jihad if you don't do these things three things you should love Allah you should love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you should love Islam and the striving for Islam more than the eight things your mother and your father your children your sons and your daughters your brothers and your sisters your wives or the husbands for the wives your relatives and your friends the wealth that you want to gather for yourself your bank accounts or whatever wealth you want your businesses or your jobs and the homes or the countries in which you love to live. If you don't love Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and striving for Islam over this, these eight things, warning now. Fata Rabbasu, wait then. Wait for what? Wait. Fata Rabbasu, wait and watch. You see, when you want, you say, wait and watch. I'll show you now. Wait. Fata Rabbasu. Hatta yati Allahu bi amrihi wallahu la yahdil qawmul fasiqeen. Unless Allah decrees a matter over you, and what is that matter? The matter is punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A punishment over you. And when that punishment comes from Allah, you keep crying for the help of Allah and there is none to hear the cry from you. Allah doesn't respond to your cry. You understand what it means? Allah not respond, responding to the cry? Allahu Akbar. You read the Quran. Attributes of Allah. Attributes of Allah is Al-Mujib. Mujib. The Arabic word Mujib, if you watch my videos on 99 names of Allah, when I took the attribute Al-Mujib, that Al-Mujib from that attribute is the Urdu word that we say Jawab. Sual Jawab. Jawab means answer, to reply. Al-Mujib, the one who answers you. When you call, Allah answers. It's a promise of Allah. Can there be anyone, anyone who can fulfill the promise perfectly than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The promise of Allah, it's his attribute. It's the attribute of Allah where Allah says, my attribute. Do you believe in the attribute that Allah is most merciful? Do all of us believe that he is the most merciful? As much as you believe he is the most merciful, same level you have to believe he promised. If anyone calls me, you know the ayat in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, ayat number 186, it doesn't say if the Muslims call me. It says, say to my slave, my slaves ask you, who are the slaves? Every son and every daughter of Adam is a slave of Allah. Every Muslim and non-Muslim man and woman is a slave of Allah. And Allah says in the Quran, say to my slaves, say to the Muslim men and Muslim women, say to non-Muslim men and non-Muslim women, if they call me, I answer their call. It's a promise of Allah. I answer, I respond to their call. What did the Prophet Sallallahu say at the time, which is the second or the later part of the night, the third part of the night, Allah is there and Allah is calling his slaves. Is there anyone amongst you who wants something from me? I swear by my izzat, I want to respond to you. I want to give what you are asking me. Your Rabb is there. Allah is calling you. Call me. I want to give what you are asking me. But what is the warning in the Quran? Fatarabbasu, then take a warning. And what did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam say? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, A time will come in my ummah after me. A time will come in my ummah after me. They will make prayers and duas to Allah, and Allah will not accept their duas. Whose duas? It's not non Muslims, and the promise of Allah is. Even if a non-Muslim calls me, I will respond. But now the Prophet is warning you and me. If the Muslims from my ummah, they call Allah, Allah doesn't accept their duas. Why? Because they have stopped to invite non-Muslims to Islam. 
when my ummah stops inviting non-Muslims to Islam, they keep calling Allah in duas and Allah doesn't accept their duas. Approximately how many people go for Hajj every year? 2.5 million people and above. 25 lakh plus people go for Hajj every year. Every day in Kaabatullah and Masjid and Abuwi. How many people? Millions! Millions! Making Umrah and Tawaf. Masajid throughout the world. Millions! If you want an example to understand whether my duas, our duas, the dua of the Ummah is being accepted or not, look at the conditions. See, there is one dua as I individually ask. Individually, it may be responded to me, this is how Allah has set the universe. Individually. But as an Ummah, as an Ummah, you are put to abuse now. You are put down as an Ummah to such an inferior, inferior level that the dog in an American society, a dog in a white society has more respect than a Muslim traveler on the plane. The plane can be grounded only because you are identical to an orthodox Muslim. The co-passengers, they felt threatened because you had a beard. And they were threatened because while the plane was taking off, while the flight was taking off, you made the normal dua, Subhanallah, they sakhara lana haza wa ma kunna lahu mukhrinin, wa inna ila rabbina la munkhaliboon. The co passenger sitting next to you, oh, this guy, he is saying something in Arabic. He is talking about blasting the plane. Land the plane, land the plane. He spoke something in Arabic. Plane has landed. Yaqi, this is a disgrace to you and me, to the whole ummah. Take more examples. When I was a child, when I was doing my 9th standard and 10th standard, when we used to go for Friday prayers, in the Friday prayers, the khatib of the masjid, the imam of the masjid, he would make duas to Allah. Ya Allah, help the Muslims in Palestine. Ya Allah, help the Muslims in Palestine. How many years back I am talking about? About 15, 20, 25 years back. My father and when he was young, when he went to the masjid, he heard the same dua. Ya Allah, help the Muslims in Palestine. Since what time are we making duas for Palestine? 1960. Since 1960. To be more precise, since 1948. To be more specific, since 1918 to 1921, we are making duas for Palestine. 1918 to 1921, since the Balfour Agreement, the 1917. Is the year. In 1917, there was a Balfour Agreement for Palestine, where for the first time the Palestinians were politically deprived of their rights in Palestine. And the scholars of the time, they understood that something is happening which is not correct for the Muslims. 1917, 1918 onwards, we are making duas. Ya Allah, help Muslims in Palestine. And what is the year now? 100 years we are making that dua 100 years how many of us Muslims millions not millions billion billions made duas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala billions of Muslims there were righteous amongst this Muslim ummah but no 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 the disaster is not just there look at the warning of the prophet when my ummah when the time comes before Qiyamah, a time will come where my ummah will supplicate to Allah make duas to Allah and Allah doesn't accept their duas because they stopped inviting non-Muslims to Islam. This is a warning of Allah's Messenger Where are we investing all our money and energy? In fight. This Jamaat is right. This Jamaat is right. This scholar is right. This scholar is incorrect. This scholar is like this. Blaspheme this person. Insult this scholar. Insult this public figure. All our potentials and energies we are just throwing away for this cause. And the Prophet is warning us, the Prophet's warning to this Ummah, your duas will not be accepted. 100 years we are making dua for Palestine. But as I said, that is not the end of the devastation. You know what happened? 1990 comes. 1990 comes. In the dua, Bosnia Herzegovina is added with Palestine. Ya Allah, help the Muslims in Palestine and Bosnia Herzegovina. Ya Allah, help Muslims in Palestine and Bosnia. A few years pass, Afghanistan gets added in it. 
another Muslim country gets added in it. Ya Allah, help Muslims in Palestine, in Bosnia, in Afghanistan. And another year passes and Iraq gets added to it. One upon the other, another, another. Muslim country is getting added and added and added. And then few years pass, Kuwait gets added to it. And a few years pass, Syria gets added to it. And a few years pass, Libya gets added to it. And a few years pass, Turkey gets added to it. And a few years pass, Pakistan gets added to it. Few years pass, Indonesia gets added to it. Few years pass, Malaysia gets added to it. And it doesn't stop. Qatar gets added. Kuwait gets added. Dubai, Saudi Arabia. Look at the situation in the world. What has happened? You and me are complacent. We are making duas. We are muttaqeen, making duas and praying to Allah. Allah is there. He is taking care of. No, ya khi, our Prophet ﷺ did so much for Islam. We are not doing the same. It's a warning of the Prophet. When this situation comes, then time is not far that Allah will punish you and me like He punished the people of Bani Israel. Surah Bani Israel. You know the beauty of Allah. Miracle of the Quran. This is the only surah in the Quran, Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, is the only surah in the Quran where the first ayat of the surah, it talks indicating about the journey of Muhammad Wasallam of Miraj. The only place where Allah talks about the journey of Muhammad Wasallam in Miraj. We made our servant journey. And then ayat number 2, I used to always ponder, because this Quran is a miracle of Allah. Al-Hakim is Allah. The most wise revealed this message. And the message, the first ayat is talking about Miraj of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And ayat number two onwards when you keep start reading the ayat, keep reading the whole surah after that. It is talking about the people of Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam and Daud alayhi salam. Suddenly from Miraj, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shift the whole message to the Bani Israel? Because to you and me, it came as a warning where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Before you, there was a nation of Musa and Isa and Dawud alayhi salam and Sulaiman alayhi salam. We revealed to them the book. We sent to them the messenger. When they disobeyed the book and the messenger, you know how we punished them? We sent our slaves who were very strong to enter their worshipping places and their homes and to deface them. We slammed them. Destroyed them, our slaves, very strong human beings. We rushed them into the homes of the people of Musa salam because they started to disobey Allah. They started to be- break the covenant with Allah, which they made of Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, that there is no God but Allah. When they compromised on this, fearing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z of the world. When they started compromising, fearing the people in the world, we sent the same people to destroy. They entered their homes. They entered their worshipping places. Why worshipping places has been mentioned? Can you imagine? Allah is saying because worshipping place is the place where a person goes with a complete faith that this is the place. If I raise my hands and ask anything, I will get it. Allah is saying they were raising their hands to Allah to ask His help. Allah sent enemies there to destroy them because Allah was not accepting their duas from them. What is happening to you and me today? The same thing. Your masajid are bombed. You are killed inside the masajid. The place, masjid is a place where you go for peace. You are not finding peace in the world. Your job place, you don't find peace. Your home, you don't find peace. What is the last abode for you to search peace? The house of Allah. You are in the house of Allah and you are killed in the house of Allah. They enter and destroy you. That was the warning of the Prophet. When will that happen? The Prophet said it will happen when this Ummah forgets the responsibility of introducing this book to mankind. Sayy al-Bukhari volume number 7, hadith number 7,280. My Ummah will enter Jannat. All my Ummah will enter Jannat except those who refuse. What does it mean? Will any one of you and me refuse to enter the Jannat? We will never refuse to enter the Jannat. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, who can be that Alex Smart? I mean, the Sahabi did not say Alex Smart because we have some Alex Smarts today on the social media. Brother Imran said, Sahabi said Alex Smart. I am not mean It's a metaphorical way to explain something. The Sahaba immediately, they were surprised. Except a foolish person, there cannot be anyone on day of judgment to say, I don't want to go into the Jannat. Ya Rasulullah, who will be that who will refuse to enter Jannat? And the response of the Prophet was, Anyone from my ummah who disobeys Allah, meaning disobeys the book 
and disobeys me refuses to enter jannah allahu akbar disobeying allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is equal to refusing to enter jannah and allah said in surah ahzab surah number 33 ayat number 36 it does not befit the muslims that after a matter has been decided by allah and his messenger they think twice about it this is not a sign of the believer i would like to conclude my talk with the ayat with which i started that the one who will do the shifatul uzma on day of judgment this is our iman at a time when whole humanity on day of judgment will be crying to allah to take the accounts begin the accounts where it will be a terrible day there is nobody to help you none to help you at all on that day our rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be given the opportunity to intercede with allah ayat al kursi manzal ladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'izni who can dare open their mouth to intercede with allah except whom allah gives the permission the first one amongst ibn adam to receive that permission will be our rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who will make an intercession to allah shifaat to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his shifaat will be accepted by allah but i started my talk with an ayat in the quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a warning to us through prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where allah said on day of judgment in surah furqan surah number 25 ayat number 30 what did allah say wa qala rasulu ya rabbi remember our rasul is rahmatul lil alamin am i right or wrong that is very iman this is what quran testified in anbiya ayat number 107 wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatul lil alamin we sent you not but as a rahmat to alamin this rahmatul lil alamin wa qala rasulu ya rabbi on that day my messenger will say oh my lord inna qaumi takhadhu hadhal qur'an mahjura these are the people of my community of my umma who migrated away from the quran they knew what the quran said to them but they still followed a lifestyle that was against the teachings of the quran he will intercede against us this is the severest of warning that we can receive imagine entire hope of this umma on day of judgment if your deeds if allah is not directly having mercy upon you our last hope is rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his shifaat but the one on whom you have kept your hope you are in the court of law the judge can give you a death sentence and it is the witness his witness will either prove your innocence or prove you a criminal law and on that day the shifaat of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in favor of you or against you will save you or will destroy you that is the warning of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam given in surah furqan surah number 25 ayat number 30 wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh inshallah next week we have the talk on the original muslims so uh, please don't misunderstand me there are no duplicate muslims but when i say the original muslims original in the sense the true muslims the perfect muslims the absolute muslims mashallah and what were their qualities inshallah if allah wills that shall be my talk inshallah in the coming sunday inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Well, uh, here before we end this session, I have few announcements to make. Kindly donate generously to the IREF and remember to give your zakat to the IREF. Well, uh, here, wa akhru dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Oh, sing children of the world, come together and hear the call. Sing children of the world, Islam will unite us all. Sing children of the world, come together.